Women of aristocracy and upper middle class seldom breastfed. These women believed it was crude, common, and beneath them. They would employ wet nurses to do the job. Here's an example of wet nursing. This is an example of wet nursing. What is this? I don't want this thing. Get it out of here. Yeah, come on, come on over here. Such a Let me have that. Let me have that. Thirsty baby that she don't even want to be. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, little lady. Is that baby can go without it? You, you are. Oh, that's gross. Everything's beneath you, girl. You're too pretty. That's a problem. Don't you know it? You're scared. You're scaring the baby. If you keep this up, I'm gonna have to slap you. Put you in your place. Go ahead. That is gross. <laughs> Infanticide. Churches denounced infanticide, saying every life is sacred. Infanticide was still rampant, though, because of the severe poverty in the land. Foundling hospitals emerged in Paris first, and then all over Europe. These foundling hospitals were like orphanages, because people would leave their babies on the street. By 1770, one-third of all babies born in Paris were abandoned and left at foundling homes. Here is an example. I threw it on the ground You must think I'm a joke I ain't gonna be part of this system Marriage Women had no say in who they were married and it was usually arranged by their fathers Women had to obey the man of the house, whether it was her father, brother-in-law, or any other male relative. Women usually got married in June because they took their yearly bath in May and they still wanted to smell good for their wedding. They also carried a bouquet of lots of flowers to cover up their B.O. scent so that they smelled good. Public display of affection was considered disgraceful and could lead to punishment. And love had no role in marriage until the 19th century. Father, who shall I marry? Well, let me take a look over here. What do we have here? Brothers and sisters, look, look at this man. This is the man for you. I can do it. He can do it. the show of holy matrimony and today we are going to be wedding these lovely two people in the name of the Lord do you take this thing to be your lovely wedded wife you deal with the devil I tell you now what do you have to say she doesn't have a word in this she's a woman right <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah man <laughs> no just hold hands or something I wouldn't find your hands on you because she's like Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Medical improvements. Due to the improvement in their diet, the Black Plague was virtually disappeared from Europe in the 17th century. Even the increased sanitation 
the conquest of smallpox was a medical triumph of the 18th century, which resulted in 80% of Europeans contracting it and many were scarred for life. Humanitarianism of the late 18th century led to hospital reform, which led to the first humane mental hospital founded in England in 1790. One of the most astonishing improvements happened within the late 18th century that was brought on by humanitarianism, which led to the first mental institution in 1790. Now the thing about- I'm, I'm not crazy! Ah! Ah! Get off me! Get off me! Children were often treated indifferent and with strict physical discipline. Doctors often declined to care for children, believing that there was little to be done, because the parents could do whatever they wanted with their children, and beat them and yell at them, and there was no point in caring for the child because it's not going to change anything. I was taking it back. 
education in the 18th century. Now in the 18th century, we saw some of the first elementary schools pop up. Now Prussia had made elementary school compulsory in some places by 1717. Other Protestant states eventually adopted similar systems to Prussia. Catholic states had their own education system, however. Now before the 18th century, France had already set up charity schools for the poor children. There they were taught scripture, as well as reading and writing. And that is education. Now let's see an example of what education was like in the 18th century. Jesus? You know what? Jesus is always the answer, so you know what, John? You're gonna be right on this one, okay? The putting out system, or the cottage industry, was a major part of Europe's economy in the 1700s. People who were eager to generate income in their households would have merchants supply them with raw materials, they would build clothing, and they would give it back to the merchants for money. Spinsters were widows and unmarried women who spun for a living inside of their homes. But the problem with this was that there were disputes between suppliers over materials and prices, and it was very unorganized. The result of this was thousands of families were able to have income to keep their houses and feed their families. Experimenting with different styles of clothing, say you could have a uh, third sleeve on your shirt or something weird like that. Goods would also include textiles, knives, forks, housewares, buttons, gloves, clocks, and musical instruments. Some machines that they used were the flying shuttle, which enabled the weaver to throw a shuttle back and forth with one hand, and it would be a lot faster. Also, the spinning jenny was very important in the 18th century. Here's an example of the putting out system. Get, get it! We need to get your supply done. We're working on it as hard as 